Daniel, he, him in New Jersey, yeah. wants to ask for us, what is the best scientific argument against Hello? creationism? Hello, Daniel. You can see why I was excited about this. Goal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how are you guys? Hey, for, hey I'm Daniel. I'm awesome, man. How are you? I'm doing good. It's pretty nice to talk to you, uh, to you, both you and Dave. It's really nice. I've been following you, you bet. Both for a while. It's pretty, it's pretty nice. Well, thank you. Well, what's your question? Daniel, you there? Uh -oh. No. Oh, no, no after all that. Are you... okay, there you go. Hey, hey Daniel, hey. We, th yeah, we thought I we lost you there. Back. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so you want to know about the best scientific yeah. argument against creationism? Forrest, if I know this might yeah, be tough for you, thing. but uh, if you if you get, if you get <laughs> if you get in trouble, Forrest, I'll bail you out. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> so what what is it? What, what's your what's your thought, Dan? You'll go ahead and articulate your your uh, question and then um, see what Forrest has to say about that. Mm. Oh yeah, the thing I had a conversation with my dad a while ago. He's a creationist. Um, that this is where my question came from because. When I was trying to explain how evolution worked to him, uh, I had little trouble because he came up with questions about the dating process and uh, that he said that we have no transitional fossils and he thought that mm. the Lucy fossil was the most complete fossil we have and the oldest and most complete or something like that. Not even and close. I do not, <laughs> I do not have probably the sufficient knowledge to explain everything well to him so i would like to come back to him with better information okay yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I, so i mm -hmm. i could answer this question for several hours but I'm, i'll be i'll be succinct um <laughs> i would just i would just point out the fact that because you know obviously there's apps to, to say that there are mountains of evidence for evolution is a, a gross understatement like it is more confirmed than gravity it's it, it's insane how much evidence we have and the fossil record is a very small part of it like it, you could throw out every fossil we've ever found and we still have overwhelming evidence for evolution from several other lines from embryology <laughs> from homology from uh, uh uh genetics is immense um but the really the most and also from the direct observations we can see evolution happening we can do it in a lab um but What's really important to point out is that, you know, when you get into these discussions and, and a creationist person wants to point out like, oh, well, they, you know, I, I don't trust the, the radiometric dating because some creationists did it wrong and it came up with the wrong numbers. And that means it doesn't work, which is what I hear all the time. Or I, you know, uh, we don't have any transitional fossils because I decided to never look up what they are because there's bazillions of them, but I haven't seen them. And therefore, or with Lucy, Lucy gets attacked all the time because Lucy is one specimen of her one species but everybody seems to think that she's the only weird ape looking thing that we found and therefore we all just assume that we came from lucy and that makes no sense either um <laughs> rather than picking through every single one of those arguments and rather than you know taking the time to educate every single one of those things i would rather just point out the fact that the best scientific argument against creationism is that there isn't a scientific argument for creationism. It is not a theory. <laughs> it's just an assertion. And even if, yeah. even if you could completely debunk evolution, if you completely proved that radiometric dating doesn't work, that there are no, fo that all these yeah, fossils it's, are just weirdly shaped right. rocks right. and that there's no, fo and, and every single bit of evolution is completely torn to shreds and we have no idea where we came from, you still have not done a single thing to back up your claims in creationism whatsoever, because yeah. you first have to prove that there's a creator. Then you have to prove that that creator can do the things you're saying it does. Then you have to prove that it did. You have to run tests on this creator. You have to do all sorts. There's so much work that goes into science. It isn't just, oh, I think it might be this. Let's all say that. And so with if you could shred evolution, you still got nothing. And, because creationism has nothing. There's no scientific evidence. There's no evidence whatsoever for this creator or for any of the things you claim it did. Um, and like we just talked about a minute ago with, with this call the problem of evil, if we're going to say that there's a creator that has a lot of baggage with it, with evolution, you know, death and destruction and random horrific events, 
those are just the random horrific events that happen in nature. There is nobody right. on the behind the wheel. Nobody's at the controls. And those things guide the process. And it's not good or bad. It just is. You're telling me there's a sentient conscience being that's that's making all this happen. That guy's a jerk. So like that now you have more problems that you have to deal with mm -hmm. on top of all of this. Um, hey, D so Daniel, yeah, that, what, that would be what I would say. Daniel, what was uh, I, I, you were choppy? It was a, a family member, I think, was was arguing with you about evolution. But what was their mm -hmm. primary argument for creation? Oh, for or did they only have stuff against evolution? Go ahead, Daniel. Yeah, there was the that is skepticism about evolution because he, he doesn't know how it works. Therefore, creationism is, uh, is right. Uh, he also okay. had, I had troubles explaining uh, how the dating process works. Yeah, because like he was wondering how they know the ex fossil is millions of years right. old. How they know the air is millions of years old and stuff like that. Yeah. So that was to force also, that was to force yeah. point. They don't have an yeah. argument for creationism. They just want to argue yeah. against evolution. And then yeah. therefore say by default, then the Bible must be true. And that's what we call the either or yeah, fallacy. Or either this thing is right or that thing is right. And there's nothing in between. It would be like me saying I have a Christmas present and I didn't buy it. Therefore, Santa must be real because those are the only two options. That doesn't yeah, make any right. sense. Right. Uh, and on top of all that, it's also really important to point out. This is just a aside. There isn't just one dating method. There are lots of ways that we date things, and we usually do more than two or three of them in order to compare. There, you know, there's radiometric dating, but a lot of times people can they 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 use the word carbon dating to mean all radiometric dating. Carbon dating only works on some things sometimes. There's other atoms, other forms of, of radiometric dating. You can do uranium, you can do potassium, you can do all, all sorts of things. Also, there's like dendrochronological dating where we do tree rings. And also there's biostratigraphic dating where we use the age of the rocks and then we measure like there's the, the different fossils here. And so these ones definitely came. There's like this whole laws of stratigraphy and laws of superpositioning that tell us how that works. There's fission track dating where we, we, we test how uh, uh, atoms decay and they leave little cracks and little marks and crystals and we can use the there's paleomagnetic dating where we can measure the ancient flipping of the Merse magnetic poles there's a, a thermoluminescent dating where we can look at like ancient ceramics that old uh, ancient cultures made and get them really hot and see how much light comes out of them due to the heat and that tells us when they and so on so there's there's so many different ways that we can do this but and for us but like, no, yeah, no, wrong. no 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 <laughs> If they contradict the Bible chronologically, then, then they're wrong and they can't of be trusted. Course. That's what it is. <laughs> well, that's, I hope, yeah, Daniel, I would, it was pretty much yeah, mm -hmm. I would recommend looking. Like, uh, there's a lot of, the, the, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Daniel. No, I'm sorry. Just, uh, he, he just said, I, I don't believe the earth is millions of your soul. Therefore, science is wrong. Is that yeah. Kind of reason? Right. Well, that's the problem when you're when you're talking to family members who are basing their understanding of science on on the Bible, which is not a scientific document by any means. Uh, then then that's the point I was making in jest with Forrest is that when 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 that contradicts the biblical uh, genealogy and the history of the it, that's in the Bible, like the six thousand year old history of the Bible, then you you, you got to believe one or the other, and they have trouble. When the, mm -hmm. when the, when the day, I remember when I was a Christian and I, I would, I would think then these carbon dating must be wrong. How do we know they're accurate? How do we know they can be trusted? How do we know the scientists aren't just yeah, making stuff up? What he was saying. Yeah. yeah. And so that's the only argument they have. And the more, here's the problem, the more that science shows us because science is moving forward. We're learning more all the time. And as that continues to increase in our understanding of our history, I mean, uh, the pictures they're getting from space now and the origins of the universe, this is going to continue to Im increase and improve. And the yeah. Bible is in more and more trouble because it's mm -hmm. going to contradict the biblical narrative more and more and more and more and more evidence is going to come yeah, forward. Yeah, now uh, more metaphors. They say everything's a metaphor when it's proving wrong or something. Uh -huh. Yeah. For thousands of years, people have believed that it was real. But now all of a sudden, we all know that it's a metaphor and it has been the whole time. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to continue to to move in in the favor of, of what we're saying. And, and people like my brother who who's come at me again, my pastor brother, 
uh, and trying to debunk evolution and, and telling me that there's scientific evidence for creation. And I'm really, I'm, I'm, holding my breath to see this because I can't, I can't imagine what that could be, but I just send it I think, over and get your Nobel prize. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's have a look at this. Cause that, this is going to be uh, groundbreaking, but anyway, we'll see. And, and that's another, th it's one more thing just really quickly before we let you go, Daniel, that's, that's one really important thing to point yeah. out. It's, it's that evolution is the central theory of biology. And you know, it's important to remember what the word theory means. Theory doesn't mean guess theory is a, a, a functional explanation of observed natural phenomena that's backed by all of the best evidence that we have. So if anybody ever asks you as evolution is a theory to say, yeah, just like gravity and cells and germs and plate tectonics and the earth going around the sun and, and all these other theories. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but the, yeah, the, the, the whole thing to remember following you and you know, yeah, just the most important thing to remember is that, you know, like Theodosius Dalsansky said, nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. Mm -hmm. If you don't have evolution, biology is just a pile of random facts that make no sense and no difference to one another. And it's just crap you have to memorize. But with evolution, all of these threads weave together into a beautiful tapestry of life. And it all makes sense mm -hmm. all of the sudden. And you can very quickly make predictions and you can run tests and all of a sudden biology becomes science and not just record keeping, you know? And so it's it is yeah. the central tenet of biology and without evolution you don't have medicine you don't have agriculture you don't have life working at all mm -hmm. well good call daniel good luck with talking to your uh, theist relatives and friends just educate yourself as much as you can because the uh, science is on our yeah, side the evidence is on our the, side uh, i i since I was raised in an evangelical ha household, uh, I've been told the years what six thousand years old. I've been trying to educate myself as much as possible. Once I got out of that rabbit hole, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah that's, that's the best way to do it. Keep Good listening, luck to, to you, man. Keep listening to smart people like Forrest. You'll learn a lot. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't have much to do. I can't. I can't help you much. But there are smart people out there. But uh, thanks for the call, Daniel. Appreciate you, man. Of course, guys. I love you both, and take care of yourself. Okay, man. Take care, bye man. Bye. Later. What a nice dude. Bye. Yeah. What? Are, he, he's just trying. He's trying to get you know educate himself, and yeah. I just want. I want That's to tell huge. people. Yeah, exactly. And uh, he's coming out of a background that that uh, really didn't put much faith in science or learning. You, it, it, you start with the Bible and try to make the answers fit the Bible, and that's yeah. ba ask ask backwards. Exactly. Ask backwards. Exactly.